you for your feedback. <laughs> Welcome to the EDUCA session about tripod plus. This session, which will last 45 minutes and will be recorded so you can watch it later, is about tools and software. My name is Vesna, I will be a moderator. I'm here with my colleagues, Christopher and Massimo. And on your screens, if you just joined us, I will give you a little uh, explanation. You can see the uh, material, so either slide or the demo that we are going to show. You can see the face of the presenter and you can ask questions. Please ask us questions because we like this session to be as interactive as possible. However, we won't turn your sound on, so just type in the question in the chat box and I will record them and then I will uh, tell them to the presenters later when they finished with their talk. We will have two talks, the session will last 45 minutes and afterwards please fill in the survey so that we can learn from your feedback and improve for the next time. So let's start with Christopher Amin. He is my colleague, he is a software engineer and he worked together with the rest of the team on actually writing the uh, API tools for dealing with dry path loss. So uh, soon, oh yeah, so, so now we see Chris and I will switch my camera off. Okay. Okay. Hi everybody, or hi again for anyone who is in the session before. So I'm just going to provide um, some really some pointers to uh, getting to know about the RIPE Atlas APIs. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on anything, but I'm just going to. Is it not working? Oh. <clears throat> Technical problems. Yeah. Okay, so you only missed a few seconds of the title screen. I think we'll survive. Great. So, so an overview of this presentation. Um, so you'll learn about which APIs are available. And they come into two main categories. There's the REST API or APIs, which provide quite comprehensive um, interaction with the RIPE Atlas system programmatically. And there's the real-time RIPE Atlas streaming which I won't go into details. I won't go into details about, but that's a way to get um, measurement results and other information quickly and in real time. I'm going to provide pointers to more information. And I'm going to tell you about some ready-made tools for working with the APIs uh, in case you are lazy or just want a helping hand. So the REST API is the core API of RIPE Atlas. Um, wherever possible, we use the RIPE Atlas API internally, so much of the website, uh, atlas.ripe.net, uses the REST API. Uh, some of it doesn't, but more and more stuff is being moved over. So the idea is anything that you can do with RIPE Atlas, you either can or will be able to do uh, using the APIs. And there are two sort of key resources which you should keep in mind and which will help you discover what's available with the API. Uh, that's the manual and the reference, and the links are on the slide. So the manual uh, contains lots of different use cases, lots of things that you can do with the API, and explains how it works. The reference is the detailed line-by-line, call-by-call, option-by-option documentation and that will help you really get into the, the, the details of it. So typically you'll use the manual to get started and the reference to tweak individual things and work out how they work. Um, one of the key things to understand about the REST API is that uh, you're authenticated using API keys, which are simple tokens which can be included with your HTTP requests and they're linked to your RIPE Access account. Okay, so this is an example of the output from the API. So everything is JSON. Everything that you post is JSON. Uh, everything that you get is JSON. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the actual contents of this particular screen. But this is an example of a measurement specification. So whenever you create a measurement, start a new measurement with RIPE Atlas, you'll post something like this. And 
you can then fetch it back again and you can see the status of your measurement you can see that it's ongoing or it's stopped you can see how many probes are participating or participated um, you can for those of you who are not used to JSON you can parse it in I believe any language um, it's one of the most widely supported formats and you can very easily extract the information that you want so just a few more links for further documentation um, there's there's plenty of stuff I mean if you go to any of these you'll, you'll get more information if you just go to slash doc because the API the rest API is such a core component of ripe atlas actually a lot of the documentation mentions or involves the API um, so I'm not going to go into details on everything that's available you should look into the manual and the reference but I'll just kind of list a few things here so you can list which measurements have already been created um, either you can find your own ones or public ones you can find by type so you can say give me all of the DNS measurements even all of the DNS measurements which target a particular server you can get information on specific measurements you can get results um, which is kind of the core business of ripe atlas you actually want to get the results from the measurements and that's also accessible using the API again you get the results in JSON uh, structure and uh, I'll I'll go into a bit more detail about how to parse those a bit later on uh, it's not just measurements it's also probes so you can do things like search for a very specific set of probes that you would like to use in your measurements and then provide the IDs of those probes when you're creating a measurement so this means you can have perfectly fine-grained uh, tuning of which probes participate in your measurement over and above what Ripe Atlas already gives you which is uh, being able to select by criteria such as country or autonomous system and so on and there's an API for the anchors and for the anchoring measurements um, so the Ripe Atlas anchors um, are targets for anchor measurements so lots of probes are participating in these and these are very useful uh, sources of data because they kind of work as baselines and you can use them to base uh, uh, measurements and analysis off so again the, the reference and the manual are the two entry points for the API um, so probably the most useful thing to do with the API in your script at least is to start new measurements so you can create a measurement programmatically um, automatically so either a script which you fire off yourself or something which runs periodically you can do that using the API um, you'll need API keys so you can create API keys on the website so you, you go to the atlas.ripe.net website you authenticate using ripe access as usual and then you have the ability to create API keys to assign permissions to those keys and then to use them in your requests um, it is also possible to create API keys using the API using the API keys API um, that's kind of a niche case but it could be interesting for example if you want to automatically create a key when you create a measurement there are various use cases but the main thing is you can do it on the website so this is an example of creating a measurement using the API so this is using curl which is just a command line program which is uh, very simply doing an HTTP post in this case um, and you're actually sending JSON data so you would work out what data you actually want to send by looking at the reference or there, there are some examples in the manual uh, and you provide the API key which you generated in your API key manager um, so there's a there's a kind of a shortcut to generating this um, a bit of a ripe atlas life hack you can use the ripe atlas website to set up a measurement as if you're going to create a new one using the UI and then at the bottom you actually get this section which is the measurement API compatible specification that contains actually it contains a full curl command line but within that is the JSON which will be posted you can use this as a convenient template so if you want to script uh, the same measurement to 50 different targets you can set up one you don't even have to create the measurement you can just look at the JSON block you can then take that as a template and then you can insert a target into the relevant position in your script so that's kind of uh, that's a useful way to start because you don't have to 
generate loads of JSON from scratch. Okay, so the other side of, um, well, the other main API we have is the streaming interface. So this is a completely separate interface and I'm not gonna go into details because Massimo is gonna talk about this in his presentation. Um, but essentially this, um, this is a way to get information faster and in a kind of constantly streamed way. And uh, yeah, so for instance, with the measurement results, you'll get the results faster than if you polled for them the, using the API. It's just kind of more efficient. And I'll let Massimo go into details. Okay, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're not alone. There are there are tools which already exist which help you use the API, so you don't have to be doing raw JSON generation and parsing if you don't want to. Um, for If you're writing Python programs, then you can use Ripe NCC supported tools. Uh, so we have Ripe Atlas Cousteau, which is the official Python API bindings. That will allow you to create requests to get the responses. Uh, it just provides a lot of convenience wrappers around it, so it makes it as easy as possible. And there's also Ripe Atlas Sagan, which will parse the uh, results of measurements. Um, so not only will it do the JSON parsing, which is fairly trivial, but it has additional information, uh, additional knowledge about what's in those results. It can interpret them, it can enrich them, um, and it can also abstract between different firmware versions, because different Ripe Atlas probes um, over time, especially over the course of the whole project, uh, the firmware changes and the format of the results changes in subtle and not so subtle ways. So this means you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you don't use Python, there are plenty of other bindings for other languages that people have already written. Um, I won't I won't list the individual projects, um, but if you go to the Ripe Atlas Community Contrib page, there are already instances of people writing supporting tools for. Uh, Perl and Go and Java and so on. Um, so there might be somebody who's already written the interface that you want, um, but if not, then you can write it and you can tell us about it and then we can spread the word. So finally, there are the command line tools. So if you, uh, I, th I think um, Stefan mentioned this in the previous presentation slot, if you don't want to deal with JSON at all, if you don't want to deal with a programming language at all, you can use the command line tools and you can do most of the things that you can do with the API, uh, but in a kind of traditional CLI interface. You can also use that to spit out JSON. Um, so you can kind of pick your level. You can choose where you, where you want to be with that. So actually that's the end. Um, but if anybody has any questions, um, then feel free to ask now or feel free to get in touch with us at the usual channels and well, we'll see if we can help you. Thank you, Chris. Am I now unmuted? Thank you, Chris. There were no questions until now for you. So uh, yeah, you stick around and uh, if there are some questions later, you can uh, answer them in chat while Massimo is talking. So our next presenter is Massimo. Massimo is a software engineer at the Ripe NCC, and he's also part of the team that uh, wrote our tools. And uh, he's going to talk with you about uh, using Ripe Atlas for monitoring and building your own dashboards. We are troubleshooting the mic issues and uh, we'll be back soon. <laughs> Yeah.
You can just use my mic. Yeah, I don't know, right? Okay. Let's try this. Let's try this. Is it working now? Is it working now? Okay. Okay. Let's do this. So, so. Perfect. Perfect. Start sharing again. We always have surprises. So let's go back. So this session is only about using visualization tools, so graphical tools, to build uh, a simple API. We will not touch any, uh, you can turn off that mic. Uh, we will not touch any uh, API, any code. Uh, we will just uh, use the tools. So yes, uh, so let's, uh, let's start. The first tool that I'm going to uh, show you, it's called LatencyMon, and as the name says, it's a tool for <coughs> monitoring latencies. And uh, so when, first thing, I, I will show you where we can find this tool. So everything starts in atlas.rive.net. Okay, we go here. On the left side, measurement maps and tools. Here we go on measurements. There we go. So when we speak about, we talk about latencies, we think like uh, ping, but actually uh, we can use this tool with uh, almost all the measurement types. So for example, uh, DNS, so there is a latency for the domain resolution or HTTP is the time to the first byte. So we, we can actually use this tool for all type of measurement. Uh, but in this in this uh, example, I will just use it with uh, a ping measurement. In particular, I already have one that I use for my uh, presentation. Usually, it is a ping to Google.it. Okay. So when we open a measurement, we find all these tabs, and we click on latency mon, and we immediately see the tool itself. Okay. So uh, what we see now is uh, kind of five rows. Uh, these five rows are uh, groups of rows. And on the right side here, you can see what the group is. Uh, so in this case, for example, there are two probes from Canada, three probes from the US, no, Ukraine, and these are six probes from the US. And uh, the green line that you see here uh, are the minimum round trip time collected over time. So the X axis is the time and the Y axis is actually the latency collected. But to understand better the latency, it's better if we start from this view, okay? This view, uh, but in this case it looks a bit flat, but let's try to uh, see if there are new samples that we can load. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, this, uh, uh, from this view that we clicked here, uh, we uh, see the absolute values. The absolute values are, of course, milliseconds because we are talking about round trip time. And we see that uh, these various groups, uh, they report kind of obvious result because we are pinging google.it, so it's the service that serves the uh, Italian uh, Italy. And we have uh, that the probes that they are slower are the one from the US and from Canada compared, for example, to the ones in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. This is our view results for geographical reasons, okay? And we see that on average, the probe, for example, in Canada, they have more than 120 milliseconds of round trip time, while uh, the probes in the Netherlands, they are way below 20 milliseconds. So what we are comparing here, and it's important to notice that the y-axis is always the same, but because so you can easily compare the trends, is uh, the, the absolute values of the right to time. What you may want to compare uh, is maybe uh, the uh, variation that this round to time has over time. So if we switch, for example, again to the view that we had before, we see a completely different uh, situation uh, and we may think, for example, that the Netherlands is higher than the US. How is this possible? No, 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 no. What we are looking here is we take what we consider the, I, I would say, the normal round trip time uh, for that uh, part of the world, and we uh, uh, just visualize what is the 
changes from the minimum collected. So in this case, for example, the minimum collected is one milliseconds in the Netherlands compared to, this, for example, for the US where the minimum is 135. So in this case, what we want to compare is actually if there is from two part of the world a variation of round trip time that goes together. Um, uh, uh, so we can think something like, okay, maybe the problem is closer to my uh, service and things like this. Uh, of course, by default, you see some grouping here, but you can change this grouping and uh, you can check the grouping that you want. You can just click here. So for example, I want to have another grouping from the US. I search for US. I select some probe. I call the group US. There we go. And I have another group from the US. Okay. Uh, or what I can also do is I can put another measurement ID. So I can compare at the same time multiple measurement ID. Maybe I can measure one of my provider with one measurement, another provider with another measurement, and have two rows each for one for each provider and, and comparing them. If I hover with the mouse, I get the samples, milliseconds. And of course I can zoom and I can <coughs> use this timeline that represents the time since when this measurement was created to go back in time and display uh, previous situation. So uh, when uh, this slide is on, so when we are to the most recent data, uh, the data are provided by the stream. So this means that every time the probes involved in this measurement will produce a new measurement, a new result, we will see uh, the lines updating and moving on the left. So now I show you update this tool. Let's go back on the slides. Uh, here are some resources like documentation and the source code because the tool is open source. But as I said, we are going to build our API, so uh, our um, dashboard. So the first thing we do is recreate a new HTML page. We try to embed the tool latency mon inside it and we uh, set exactly what we want to see in the tool. So to do that, I already have uh, a page created, uh, dashboard.html. I'm going to wipe it completely, it's empty. And I'm going to open uh, from the presentation the documentation link, okay? Go to page. Well, actually not only in the documentation, but also from the tool, there is a link to reach the documentation or how to embed the tool. So we copy this. If you are in the tool, I will show you anyway, so it's easier for you. In the tool is embed your page here, down here. You can click that, you will open the same page. You can just copy and paste this in the HTML page, just as it is. And of course, there is two measurement ID as an example, but we want to put the measurement that we were watching before. So this ping to Google, we copy the ID, we put it here, it's an array so we can put more than one, but for now we are going to put one. We save it and we open it in the browser, okay? There we go. This is the, the widget that we were watching before. Of course, now it's occupying the entire page. We want to put something more and we want also to specify uh, only, for example, the selection for Canada. So for doing that, I just am going to copy this. I will explain it to you now. So first of all, let's make it smaller. So this div is the one where we are attach the, the widget. We set some uh, dimension just for uh, making it a bit smaller, otherwise it's going to uh, take the entire page. And after we set also this. So essentially we say that I want a group and the group is for this measurement ID with these two probes and I'm going to call the group Canada. If I save it, I go back to the dashboard, I delete the permalink, otherwise the situation will remain the same. 
I open the page, the widget is smaller, and we have only Canada, as we said. So in the documentation, you can actually see all the things that you can do, like uh, set start time, stop time, or set the groups. You have all the parameters. Let's now go back on the presentation, and let's start with another tool. This tool is called TraceMod. Uh, this tool instead is only for uh, trace routes, and uh, uh, it probes, uh, well, I will just show it to you in, uh, uh, I will just open a new, oh, it's already open. Uh, for example, this uh, trace route, okay? The green dots that you see at the top are the probes. The probes and they do uh, measurement to the target. In this case, it's inside uh, RIPE NCC. And uh, each of these lines is a trace route and each of these dots is an IP address that uh, it's part of the trace route. We enrich the information, as you can see, with autonomous system numbers. Uh, plus, for example, uh, the blue dots are IXPs. We detect IXPs or in the path. If you click on one of these dots, you can get all kind of information about this uh, um, uh, organization. You can also get information about not only the register information, but also like, okay, do we see it in the routing information service? So is it announced or not? And uh, uh, the same for the IXPs. And uh, you can also get, like, uh, if you click contact holder, you can get, uh, for example, an email address uh, to contact this uh, the technical uh, department of uh, the company itself. Another feature that we have is that when we click on one wildcard, usually wildcard doesn't provide any information, we uh, instead show uh, a guess, a best guess, of, of who, is, who can be behind this wildcard. At the bottom, you find the uh, round trip time collected. And you can also, um, if you press play, uh, you can see the animation, uh, let's press play, the animation of the uh, updates of the trace routes uh, over time. Okay, so in this case, it was short. Let's do it again. Yeah, and you see uh, now the trace route started, but uh, at some point they will start updating and changing the path. See, like this. Okay. So also in this case, we are going to embed the widget. So we click on embed in your page. We open the documentation. We copy this code that's exactly like the one before. We go in our dashboard. We go here. Of course, we have to rename uh, the development, otherwise they are going to override uh, each other. So we place it in another place. We call it Traceman. We put also in this case some uh, maximum size for the widget, otherwise it's going to take the entire page. And we put as a measurement the one that we were watching before the measurement ID. So I go back, measurement ID, put this, save. Let's try to open the dashboard again, okay? Refresh. We save. There we go. One, two. And we have two widgets in our dashboard. And I would like to remind you that these widgets, they update in real time with the streaming service that we will see in a bit. So let's go back to the presentation. We, this is a summary of all the data that you can get, IXP detail, location, routing information. You can compare with DigiPlay, uh, register information. And there is a feature that's called network annotation that will give you some pop-ups uh, to show you like, for example, oh, look, I discovered that this is a CDN. These are all nodes of a CDN, or this is a local cache, or things like this. Also, this is open source. And we embedded the uh, Tracemon uh, uh, already in the dashboard. So, um, DomainMon. Uh, my colleague before talked about DomainMon. And uh, I'm not going to say uh, what the tool can do, uh, my colleague Christopher, 
what I can tell you is that also domain money is one of our visualization tools and can be embedded exactly in the same way. So we actually, we go in the documentation to embed it. It's exactly the same code, but we really exceeded with the uh, comments in this, uh, in this uh, script. So uh, actually the, the real line of codes are really the same. So if we copy and paste it, you will see the gray part, it's just comments, you know? We save also in this case, we are not going to change anything. So what we are going to monitor is the root zone, but of course you have to put your uh, measurement or your uh, uh, TLD. And we will open the dashboard again. Oh, wait, I forgot something. Also in this case, it's better if you put some uh, size to the uh, div element, otherwise it's going to take over the entire page. Let's try again. So we have latency mon, we have trace mon, and we have slowly loading. It's not possible to connect to the server. That's the good news. <laughs> we have some. Uh, oh, there we go. It just uh, was just needed a refresh, and we have also the main mon. Okay. Now, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, we already embedded the main one. We are already enjoying the dashboard. And uh, some extra thing that I, I'm going just to tell you, I'm not going to show you, is how to use the console. I mean, you can use the console or anyway, write JavaScript code to interact with the widgets. So you can basically do your scripts to automatically show whatever you want in the widget. Or you can sync the widgets, the various widgets. There is a method based on events. You can find that in the documentation. And basically, you can do something like that. If you change a resource in one widget or a time frame in one widget, all the other ones are going to update accordingly and show exactly the same time range. So, uh, as I said, the last topic for this session is the uh, streaming, right path of streaming. And um, the streaming is another way to, uh, yes, the streaming is another way to, um, get the data actually is uh, you get the data in real time you can get various type of data uh, measurement results and for example probe connection this connection so you can monitor your probe at home when your connection at home goes down you get maybe a message or whatever you want something useful to do is to open already the documentation link but we are going to come back on this and uh, I am going to try to explain a bit how it works. So we have a huge amount of, result, uh, of uh, data coming from the, uh, the early Atlas results, that is part on the top in the presentation. And it's a continuous stream uh, of data, more than 5,000 5, uh, results per second, okay? So what you can do is you create a channel and um, this part of the, in the presentation at the bottom is your client, you create a channel and you say, okay, I want just this. You set a filter. And all the measurement passing on the filters that they will pass down, they will end up in your channel. And you can attach a callback to your channel, do whatever you feel like with that. So um, to show this, I usually, we use this scenario that was um, proposed to us from one of our users that uh, was so a good, the real one. Uh, so basically, they had issues with um, with some of their customers in a specific geographical region that they were having troubles to, uh, they were having high latencies to connect to their services. So what you can do is you can create a ping measurement to your services for 50 probes in that geographical region and keep it running every maybe one minute ping. Um, it's just a ping is an example, you can do whatever. And after you can put the um, streaming, you can connect to the streaming, the user's web socket. So you just start listening and you can also set some threshold and say, okay, just don't bother me. Just only when you have measurement, they have round trip time more than this, okay? So I uh, already prepared the code here. Uh, so we are not going to uh, do it by hand, but I'm going to open this. It's a blank page. But if you open the, the uh, console, 
uh, you will see this. These are samples coming from the streaming. Okay, these are ping results. Okay, and uh, if we watch at the code view page source, quite zoom in. It's actually really a small amount of code. Okay, you connect to the streaming. You just say, okay, I want to do this when we have results, and I want to receive all the results from this measurement ID. Okay, so we are going to copy this and, and try to change it. Okay, so we create another file HTML, streaming.html, and let's try to zoom in a bit. It's okay, I cannot zoom in. Oh, yeah, perfect. And uh, we watch in the documentation that we opened before what we can actually do. We can do a huge amount of things. There are parameters for doing uh, uh, really a lot of things. So what we would like to try is to set, for example, a, a, a minimum threshold for the speed for the round trip time. So we set it here. Greater than, to say, mean 30. So this actually means, okay, I want that the minimum value of the round trip time has to be at least 30 milliseconds. And I don't want to measure a specific measurement ID. I want to measure my network. So to measure my network, let's try to go back to the presentation. I want to measure this IP. For, that's just an example. You can put whatever. So let's remove this, the measurement ID. And I just want to measure uh, this destination address. OK? We save this. We go in the console, in the console, sorry, in the HTML page, streaming. We open the console to see the results coming. Refresh. Now something should arrive, hopefully. Of course, it depends when the pros do the measurement. Yeah, see, some measurement arrived. Uh, and this is, of course, the round trip time. It's, this is the destination network that we said, and the round trip time is way over, the minimum of the tree is way over the 30 milliseconds that we set as a filter. Okay, and some more are coming. So please read the documentation for all the other options that you have. You can even, uh, for example, uh, monitor for uh, uh, a prefix or a, um, a specific IP in a tracer. So you can say, okay, give me all the results where the tracer has passed through this op. Not that it's source of destination, but that just passed through me, for example. This is just an example. And uh, coming back to the presentation, uh, ah, this is, this is, that's all. I hope it was clear. And uh, if you have questions, uh, this is uh, the time. Start sharing. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Massimo. And uh, we are waiting for questions now for for Massimo, we have five more minutes in this session. So I see that somebody is typing, but I still don't see anything um, being typed in. So uh, you can also ask uh, any questions and, and reach us on uh, the mailing list and on Twitter. And you can uh, reach Stefan on Mastodon, and he's going to pass it on to us because we can't be on all the social networks. <laughs> okay, so if you don't have questions for us, we have questions for you. We have this feedback survey. Let me try to click on it and see what happens. Oh, no. Uh, I shouldn't click on it. You should click on it. <laughs> There's a link. Um, shall I type this link into the, the chat? Okay, Just never mind, you, you do it. Uh, <laughs> I should not do the survey. And uh, see you soon in the next session.
any any final words?